Wow, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for many, many weeks and months. Uh, so thanks a lot and uh, thank you for being here and thank you for you guys watching it out there. Okay, businessman, hardcore businessman. Yes, uh, so that was the introduction. But I actually have a heart as well. Uh, and I will try to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm a passionate businessman, yes, and I love what I do. I'm, I've been very fortunate traveling the world for the last 20 years, all over the world, mainly actually in, in Asia Pacific. But much more important is that actually I'm a family, family father. <laughs> and uh, if you look here, uh, these are my two kids. Uh, you have Simon to the right. He's, he's a joker, he's always making all these uh, jokes back home in the family. And then they have Jenny, she turns 15 this year. And this is my passion and love in life, no doubt about it. Um, and I really strongly believe in being a, a responsible member of the society I operate in it, as a businessman, but also the, what I live in as, as, a personal person, as a person. And that's why I try to, to teach uh, these two kids every day. Jenny, she went together with me to India uh, two years ago, to, to Kolkata and Mumbai. And I'm very fortunate. I, I happen to travel to India once a month. Uh, over the last six, seven years, it makes some trips. Uh, and, and I have a big, big family in India. And Manoj Kumar in Hyderabad, actually watching us now, he's my Indian brother. Uh, Sheetal in Mumbai and Anil Gupta also in Hyderabad. And, and I have this huge Indian family, which I'm, I'm strongly in love with. Uh, I consider India to be my second home. And I'm, long, I'm homesick for India every day. It's a fantastic country. Anyone been there? Yes, a couple of people. Maybe you read the last uh, wallpaper, where you have the glossy version of India, where you have all these fancy things uh, happening there. And it's, it's really amazing. It's a booming country. It's, it's a superpower now. And, and you have a stable middle class of 300 million people or so. You have some of the richest people in the world. Mr. Abani built, uh, I think it was the most expensive private home in the world. That's downtown Mumbai. It's, it's so much hope for India. So that's, that's good. But at the same time, there are 400 million people in India living below the poverty line. 400 million people. Wow, it's, it's really, really uh, awful. And, and uh, they have less than one US dollars every day to, to provide what they need. And uh, if you look at the child sex ratio in India, it's 913 girls versus 1,000 boys. There are many reasons to this. The boys are favored and, and the girls are discriminated heavily. So if you look for a second, a brief second, I'm an Indian dad. And I have this brutal, brutal challenge in life. Whom to pick? Should I send Simon to school or should I send Jenny to school? What would you have said? What, what would be your options or answer to that question? Being a Norwegian, Obviously, that's a silly question, because that never happens here. But if I'm an Indian dad, the situation would typically be, if I had a little bit of money, I would probably send Simon off to a, a, a private school, and then Jenny to the public school. Public schools are, have less quality. And uh, if I didn't have that much money at all, okay, I would prefer to send Simon to school, and then Jenny could become an income. I will come back to that later on. So uh, if we look at this number, the next page, uh, I think this is the most important number for India. Why? Today, there is actually only three out of 10 girls who completes 10th standard in public schools in India. Three out of 10. It's, it's, it's uh, being a Norwegian, it's in, impossible to think about it because it never happens in this part of the world. 93% percentage, 93 percentage of the dropouts have a mom without a formal education. So these are first generation learners. And for me, just asking me the questions, should I send Jenny to school or not? It's not, uh, it's not on my mind at all. They should have equal rights, equal opportunities. When this came to my mind, in about, uh, it was 2005, I was traveling frequently to India at that time as well, I was thinking, what the heck, I have an obligation to do something about this. 
coming down there in my suit, traveling on business, going down there, uh, and I do this business, everything. I, I, I'm obliged to do something about it. So what I, I decided to do, I looked at our business strategy. It says India is important, gender diversity is important, education is important. And I was thinking, okay, what do we do now? You establish a corporate social responsibility strategy. We focus on the same, India, gender diversity and education. And I was lucky finding a very, very strong program, which is uh, uh, provided by Nandi, which is uh, India's largest NGO. And, and we tied up with them. And we started slowly with the program, supporting it out of Norway. In 2007, I invited uh, the Norwegian Parliament, Stortinge, and the Standing uh, Committee of Education to our program in Hyderabad. Uh, and it was a huge crowd, 15, 16 MPs coming down, and uh, we invited them to our kitchen. We have a kitchen in Hyderabad where we provide meals to 1.2 billion, sorry, million kids every day. And we had them on a tour, took them around at the end of the day. Uh, they, uh, we had a panel and they were sitting there and, uh, you know, they wanted to give us feedback. And, uh, you know, politicians, they talk a lot, so the left wing wanted to talk for hours and hours and the right wing wanted to talk for hours and hours. And the feedback was amazing. But at the end, there was one elder gentleman, he didn't say anything, Odd Einar Dörum, uh, you probably know him, the, the, at least the guys in, the, in this room. I consider him to be a very, very uh, uh, intelligent man, and he didn't say anything, but at the end he raised his hand, and he said, when I was a politician in the 60s, I was formed by uh, this uh, idol of mine, Martin Luther King, who said, I have a dream. And then he said, and, and that gives me goosebumps still, today I've seen the dream of India come true. At that very moment, I decided I had to do more. You're obliged, Anders, to do much more than just have a simple, small program for, for this company in Norway. So I decided, when I left uh, the, the place that morning, I'm going to, to deploy a global program in this global company of 100,000 people. And after some years, it actually happened. So today, uh, Capgemini is the name of the company. Uh, they support the education of 10,000 girls. From so. Um, thank you, and, and what did I do? Okay, I could use my money, which I have in my pocket, uh, some crowners or US dollars, but I'm not that wealthy, so I cannot provide for 100,000 girls or 10,000 or whatever. So, but I'm a businessman. I could mobilize people. I could actually write business strategies. I could operationalize them and actually make things happen. And that's what I did. That was my skill set. So that, that is what I, I, I did to make a difference. If you look at this uh, next one here, uh, two beautiful Indian girls, they are both 11 years old. The one with the green scarf, she's actually married. Her future is sealed. She doesn't have any options left. She will have a, a, a way to go into marriage with her husband and, and get some kids and stuff. But the other one, she has an option. She, she is st still in school. And the girl in school, she's not at risk. You know, if you're out of school, the risks for Indian girls today are you could become a child laborer, you could become a sex slave, which is not that uncommon. You could actually be a domestic help, or you could take the job of looking after your siblings. So for these girls, or for many families, they look upon these girls as an income. And we need to bring these girls to school and make sure that they are not coming into such situations. There are actually today more than 8 million dropouts in India. 8 million dropouts. I mean, that number is so big, I, I, I get dizzy just thinking about it. So what can I do? Uh, Nandi, we have about 100,000 girls enrolled into our program today. Our goal is 1 million. It doesn't uh, solve the entire problem, but at least I could contribute. And my goal is that my beautiful girl, Jenny, and this other one, this Indian girl, they will have equal opportunities for education, equal opportunities for actually creating their own future. I'm not sure if I'm going to fix all the 8 million. That would be pretty tough. But I will never give up in my entire life, and I will focus on this on the rest of my life. Thank you very much.